Hey guys, Kev here, and uh, man, I really don't want to do it. I don't need to take it apart, but I've had a few of you guys ask me about it. And so I think I'm going to take this apart for science. Uh, but I want to state now, it is perfectly centered. It has a great detent. The action is very, very good. Um, I don't really have any reason to, you know, maybe a little bit of pivot lash that the skiffs could get rid of. We'll see about that. But, um, yeah, there's really not a whole lot of reason for it. I just want to do it for you guys. So that's a T6. We're going to need T8. And I'm hopefully going to be able to get this out because I did glue it on that live stream the other night. I'm hoping it might be a T10, actually. So let's just try that. Yes. All right. Oh, yeah. It came right out. That's why I don't use a lot of glue. Just so you know, um, I just put a little bit on there and that went ahead and uh, cured. Oh, shit. Balls. That could be bad. Oh, thank God. You know what's not good? I have, I have a vent. <laughs> like at the end of my desk down there and I'm just waiting for the day that I drop a screw or something and it goes down into the uh, vent. That's just like what I'm waiting for. Um, so I'm just gonna pick at this a little bit. I'm gonna grab a little pick here. I have this little pick set I got uh, for flashlight stuff, but yeah, perfect for this. Nylon pick, so it can't really damage. PVD coated titanium, right? So I can kind of go at it a little bit. I swear I did not put a lot on here. Uh, but, you know, once you put glue or whatever into a small space like that and then tighten it, it's going to it's going to push that stuff around or uh, push it down. So, I'm just going to take a cloth, clean this off. So I've been warned by a couple people about this knife when you take it apart. Apparently there's some washers around the backspacer, which I figured would be the case because you have a floating backspacer. So whenever you have a design like this with floating backspacer, there has to be something there to take up that space. So they put washers there. So you just need to be really careful when you're taking it apart um, that you account for that because they're going to fall out so anyway t8 back here and i think that's it right yep there goes one of those washers already look at that where was that was that in there or was it it almost seems like that one was right there right does that seem like how that was See, does this come out? What the heck? Because one of those was, I swear I just dropped it in there. I don't know what happened there, but all right. So it seems like that was underneath there. This is gonna be interesting, yes. So let's get this apart. Backspacer. I could see two more washers there. So, all right. Why can't I get it? Another one fell out. That one looks different. So, keeping this one with the clip because I think that's how it was. Luckily, I have this on camera if I have problems. I don't know why it doesn't want to. Just trying to be careful. Definitely did not need to take it apart, and I did it anyway. So, my punishment is whatever happens here. It's this stop pin. It doesn't want to come off. Here's another one. And that's a small one again, so this is getting interesting. And another one. Big one this time. All right. Well, can we just get that out of there now? There we go. Okay, there's the backspacer. 
I just need to get this stop pin to uh, come out. That's all. Jesus. Okay. <laughs> Bigger bearings than I expected. There's our stop pin. Okay. Hopefully we didn't lose any of those little washers. I think we have four. So as you can see, there's two little guys and two big guys. Okay. Clean this stop pin. Let me get the blade off. Interesting construction. Uh, I do will say I like it better than how the Brian Brown Jaeger MV3 was done. That one was, man, it was tough because you had to screw it in like kind of backwards. It was weird. Unless this is similar. Oh, I don't even want to mess with that. Oh, oh yeah, look, that comes off. Oh, okay, well, that makes more sense anyway. This is very annoying. Okay, got that out. Let me clean this up. So, this is a barrel, so it doesn't matter. Assuming it, the knife goes together with this tight, which it should, um, then you would be fine. So, I just need to, I think, put a little Loctite on this is what I'm going to do. Because I don't want that to come loose on me. Because um, that's what tends to happen, even though it shouldn't, because it's a moving part or whatever. Not a moving part. Um, I don't think it matters which side, but I think it was this side. So I'll just stand it up. Yeah, I definitely didn't need to take this apart. But hey, science, baby. It's for you guys, okay? We'll get it back together. Don't lose anything. So I'm just going to take a little bit of Loctite here. Shake it up. Let's see if this needle didn't uh, congeal. Okay. Just a dab, nothing crazy. And because this part doesn't really move much, I don't need to worry about it too much in terms of, uh, like, letting it sit for two days and all that goodness. Should be fine. So let's get this back in, which is probably going to suck. Actually, let's flip the washers now. So I'm going to flip these. Looks like we're just rocking 5 mil uh, bearings, which is cool. But I'll check that. They might be uh, 3 16th. So let's get that in, and then it should just pop in here. i got to rotate it around this way. Hmm. What's going on here? Okay. This way? What is going on? Oh, it just, okay. It was just tight. I had to push it through there. Okay, got it. All right, so that's in. Flip this one as well. That's good. Clean off the uh, lock bar here. We could, you know, we could probably put a little pressure on it. I didn't really do anything. I don't really want to. I think it's fine. Clean this up. Looks good. Clean the detent hole out. The belt satin takes a while to wear a path. You can even see that it's not fully worn in yet up here, down here. So it takes a little bit of time. Got to be patient with these things. Uh, this pin felt pretty tight, so there's a little wobble. 
I don't want to go crazy. But I just put a dab in there. Just so we don't have any stop pin wiggle. That's the worst. You do all this shit, put your knife together, and then you end up with this little bit of wiggle. It's like, come on. All right, so that's all good. Let's check the skiffs. So grab my handy dandy Tinker Force tray. These are looking like obviously 1 16th, but they're looking like five millimeters, not 3 64ths, which is interesting. But they are 3 16ths. All right. So we're really running low on those bad boys. But I don't see them too often, so we should be good. Ow. The cap, yep. And one set here. Now, 5 millimeter 1 16th will work in here. If you only have those, they will work. Trust me. Um, and they'll probably be just fine, honestly. But... If you want the correct size, it's going to be 3 16th, 1 16th, single row, 11 ball. Okay. So there's one. Take this, put that there. All right. Now we're going to figure out this backspacer here in a second. So put this on. All right, so take a little bit of KPO Heavy, put a little, I mean, that's the tiniest little dot you're going to see, but that's what I want. So we got all that, now for the backspacer. So to me, what it looked like was you had a little ring here, right? And then a big ring. Well, it doesn't make sense, does it? So this ring fits around the barrel. This ring doesn't. Okay. Does it fit in there? No, okay. Can't go under there, but it definitely came from this side. So, sorry, that was my hat. It's almost like it goes through it, but how would that work? Hold on. So this one can't go here, right? Oh, wait. No. So, I think I just need to put this one on this side. Like that. Okay, it's backwards. I don't know. Which way does it go? Like this. Pretty sure this one goes here. Pop that in there. So you have one there. Then obviously, oops, this one goes here. Now where do these two go? They seem to be for the screw. So, oh. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, so I got it. I got it. So this one goes here. That one stays there. So let me just take this off. That one goes through into that hole. One spacer there. This goes on the other side of the backspacer. That stays there, and you have to get your screw through it. Interesting. That's got to suck. That's got to suck. How 
How the hell do you make sure that lines up? That's really hard. God damn it. Try assembling a bunch of these? Holy shit, that suck. Okay. And then this goes here. And this, I guess, goes here? See, I thought it was on the in here, but maybe I maybe it just fell out. That's what I'm guessing. So it goes here. Like that. That is a nightmare. Alright. Then let me clean this out. Take a little glue in here or something. Okay, place this down. This is gonna be brutal, dude. I just want this screw to go through and get into everything as soon as possible. I have no idea how that's gonna it's going to take forever, I think. Unless I somehow get lucky and nail it. Holy shit. I did. I did. I got lucky and nailed it. <laughs> That's not right. There's no way I got that right the first time. Let's just see how it works, if it works at all. T10. That's a tough one, dude. I mean, that's insane if that's how it works. Centering's good, by the way. So, hopefully you guys caught all that. You have to get a little washer, little black washer on each side of the backspacer where this clip screw goes through. And then you do the same thing with the pin. There's bigger ones for the pin. So then you have to drop the screw through the backs, through this scale, through or through the clip, through the scale, through the backspacer, and into here, all through those little washers without having it fuck up. It's insane. No play. Action is a little soft, but I think it's because it's Brand new washers, brand new bearings, right? Um, but centering's good. Detent's good. No play. Action's already breaking in. And we lost the pivot lash. So we did get a benefit out of this. I might Loctite this one, guys. Because I think this is one I might need to fiddle with a little bit before I just call it good you know so let me just make sure everything's locked in here that's tight that's pretty tight so let's just see if i can go a little looser so that's centered no play yeah i mean it's gonna break in just like it did before But I've got some room. Nah, eh, not much. It's already swinging down. But I did Loctite this side, so I'm like, why don't I just Loctite this side and call it a day? Stop being an idiot. That's what I'm gonna do. Whoops. Luckily that's PVD. I do like this cap, the captive pivot on this knife. 
uh, I think it works. On the Jaeger, it was all one piece, and you had to, like, screw in this thing, not... It was very frustrating. Uh, this is different. This is three pieces, so it works better. Here's the Loctite. So this is tough because these screws are so hard to pin down. They just don't want to... Ugh. All right. too much uh, that's what I'm saying these screws are horrible man the the tooling on these Pena design screws are terrible as much as I love the knives they're just, I'm gonna start over this is just ugly what I mean by that is that you just and uh, Jack Wolf uses the same design and it's just, it's so hard. Yeah, they look cool, but it's so hard to keep a bit in it. Was I using the wrong one? No. So they have such shallow tooling that the bit just falls out. So trying to Loctite it is really hard because you got to like, you can't, you don't have anything holding it steady, basically. There we go. All right. All right, so then I'm just gonna place it in. And realize that I don't think we cleaned the uh, inside of the pivot. I'll grab a T6 or something small here to just Alright, that was a bad move. I'm an idiot. We know this. That bit went right through and then put material inside of the uh, inside of the thread. So hang on, let me see if I can get this out. <sighs> yeah, I got it. Alright. <sighs> that was dumb. I'm trying to blow it out too. All right, back to this. We still have it on there, yep. Not a lot, but shouldn't need a lot. All right, now we can kinda set it how we want it. Instead of just going, yeah, it's fine. Because it's glued. Can't fuck with it. Okay, let's just feel that again. Whoa. Okay, I can go tighter. Yeah, definitely could go tighter. Didn't really feel any play, though. No play. Whoa. Yeah, the action on these are just insane. So, I think that's good. Centering is perfect. Detent feels great. Lock up, solid. I mean, no play at all. Those bearings, washers are gonna break in perfectly. No taps, no rattles, nothing crazy. Yeah, we're good to go, guys. Uh, that worked out. Surprisingly, had no issues. Um, <laughs> I'm going to let it sit now for a couple days and let that uh, cure. But if you were curious, that's how it works. You're going to have four washers in there around the backspacer. Two small and two big. The two small ones go on either side of the clip screw that goes through everything. So you have to line those up. Line the backspacer up, have it all lined up, then push the clip screw through the clip, the scale, everything, and hope nothing fell out of line, and then tighten that down. You can obviously tell because you can see they're in place and they're not coming out. 
And then you do the same thing with the two big washers around the um, pin. But that one you can kind of just set in. It's easier. And then obviously you have uh, bearings in here um, and two more washers. But those are regular. Uh, and then the skiffs were 3 16th, 1 16th, 11 ball. That's what you'll want for skiff bearings. And that's it. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, baby. I'll uh, I'll probably do a follow-up review on this. I want to do a video talking about a few of these knives. The uh, Pena, Alacron, the Evo, or Mini Evo from Sharp by Design. And then the uh, Davlis here from CKF. These are three knives, four knives, sorry, that I got. They all... Pretty much came out last year. Um, I got them all recently, and I put uh, I did disassembly videos on all of them, didn't I? So this one you haven't seen yet, I guess. Well, by the time you see this, you, you will, so sorry. That's a little time traveling in my head there. Um, yeah, just really stoked on these uh, four knives. And instead of doing reviews on each one, because... I've now done unboxing, disassemblies. I'm just going to do like a rapid review on these four because I, I don't know. It's odd for me to get knives like this in and um, keep them and love them all, you know. Usually it's like, what, maybe an 80, 90% chance I'm going to review it and flip it. And I'm not saying I won't sell these, but... I don't know. I just really like all four of these. Uh, this one right here is probably the first one that would go just because of the size. Um, you know, I'm also not the biggest stud guy. But the fact that a stud knife at this size has stuck around this long uh, in itself is kind of impressive to me. It's, it's a very good knife, guys. Very good knife. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, there you go. That's how you disassemble, reassemble, skiff swap the Pena Javi Garcia Paramore. This is an absolute banger. Um, I don't know if they're making more of these in the future. They are available at the time of recording this. I kind of want a second one. That's how much this knife impresses me. And uh, I'm stopping myself from getting a second one, but... Um, I suggest you pick it up if you're on the fence. It's a go. It's a very, very well-made knife. And for the price, 300 bucks. I think it's hard to find something with this level of finish and detail. Um, it's excellent. So, love you guys. Hope you have an absolutely fantastic day. You can, of course, get all the skiff bearings and tools and everything at their website using my link and my code LEFTYEDC. will save you 10% off. Catch you guys later. Peace!